بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today is Tuesday the 27th of October 2020 and we are continuing with our Arabic language level 1 at the Barak with our foundation. Inshallah we will continue from where we would have left off in our last class and um, if you all can remember last week we went through the two structures that is the Jumla Ismiya, the nominal sentence and the verbal sentence. So we are just going to do a brief review of the structure of these two types of sentences, then as an extension of the different types of sentences, we will go into the transitive and intransitive verbs. This will be followed by the preposition and the case of the prepositions. We'll get into the definite article and the definite article is in connection to what is being presently done with Professor Abdurrahim's um, book, the Medina series you know, Arabic for non-Arabic speaking students. So, you know, let me welcome all of you all again to the Barak Budawa Foundation, um, Arabic language program. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Okay, so let's move on with our, our work. So as I said, a brief review of the different types of sentences. As we had indicated, Arabic language has two types of sentences. And what are these two types of sentences? The first being nominal sentence, which we call jumla ismiya. And the jumla ismiya, as we mentioned, has two main parts. What are the two parts of the, of the nominal sentence? We have the subject, which is called the mubtada. And we have the predicate, which is called the khabar. There is an understood is our arm that comes between the mubtada and the predicate and the khabar, the subject and the predicate. So in this sentence, for instance, yeah, Zaidun Waladun, Zaid is a boy. We have the understood is. Likewise, Fatima to Benton, Fatima is a girl. There's an understood is between the Muptada and the predicate. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then we mention about the different cases that exist for the subject and the predicate. And we said that both the, sub, the subject, which is the mubtada, and the predicate, the khabar, they would exist in a case called rafa. And rafa usually will take a thumb. Now, we will see later down the road, you know, in our studies, that there are different types of nouns. And depending upon the different types of nouns, then the different cases may take a little different voweling or different letters. But at this stage for you all, which are the beginner stage, introductory stage, let's go with, you know, as an easy thing that it will take dhamma. So you can be able to relate to it at least. When those, irregular, if those irregularities comes about, then inshallah we would identify them. Okay, so we'll say that they exist in the case of Rafa. So this is the basic structure of the nominal sentence. The, the sentence has from right to left, Mubtada and Khabar, both existing in the case of Rafa. All right, so moving on, we went into the verbal sentences as well, and we did all the different agreement. And one thing you mentioned about with respect to the nominal sentence is that there will be agreement in the subject and the predicate of the nominal sentence as regarding number as regarding gender, okay? All right, so here we are at verbal sentences. Verbal sentences, again, from right to left, we see that these are the main components of it. We have firstly the sentence starting with a verb, which is called in Arabic, fe'lun, fe'lun, verb. Then this is followed by the doer of the action, which is called the file. And this is then followed by the receiver of the action, which is called the maf'ulun bihi. So these are the three main components, the file or the verb, the file or the subject of the verb. And then we have the maf'ul, the object, maf'ulun bihi, the object of the verb. Now, what can we say about the verb? 
the verb, the past tense verb that is, is considered to be a constant and will not take any case. The file, the subject, we learned that it exists in a in the case called rougher, just as we did with the subject of the nominal sentence and the predicate of the nominal sentence, both of them existing in the case of rougher, in a like manner, the subject of the verbal sentence, which is called the file, will also exist in the case of rougher. And we mentioned that rougher will usually take what vowel? The vowel, them, that's right. And the third part of the sentence is the object or what we call the mafrul bihi. Now this exists in a case called nasb. Nasb. Nasb usually takes what vowel? The vowel fatha. So, so take note of these three main parts of the verbal sentence again. The fail, the file, and the mafrul. The verb, subject, and object. And as we have a sentence here, we have, for instance, Zoraba Zaidun Bakran. What is there for agreement? It is necessary that the that there be agreement between subject and verb. There must be agreement between subject and verb with respect to gender. There is no need for agreement as regarding number. What did we mean by that? It means that this verb here, Dharaba, which right now is a masculine singular form. If we were to translate Dharaba by itself, what does it mean? It means he hit, he, he is singular, okay? It is a third person masculine. This form of the verb, let's consider this to be the masculine form. This will be in agreement whether the subject which is Zaid is singular, if you have Zaid alone, or if it is dual, let's assume we have Zaid and Bakr, and assuming it is plural as well, we have the word boys, Aulad, it will still use the verb Dharaba. If, however, the subject is feminine, like for instance, we have Fatima, then Dharaba will have to be changed to the feminine form, which is Dharabat, We'll add the ta at the end of it. Inshallah, we'll see examples of this coming later into this class. Okay, but I suggest put everything back into perspective. And um, so that is as you got an agreement between subject and verb. So you're speaking about the feminine. So if you have Fatima, we'll say Dorabat. If you have Fatima and Zainab, it will still be Dorabat. If it is that we have girls, which is Banat, the plural, it will still be Dorabat. So let's move on with that. So we're going on to something that is connected to the verbs. Now, for those who want to reference this in your Ari grammar text, it will be on page 11, right? It speaks about the transitive and the intransitive verbs. Now we have to identify that since that is in relation to a verb taking a subject, um, an object or not. So what does this transitive and intransitive um, verb refers to? What does it speak about? So let's revise firstly the understanding of it from English and then you see the applicability of it in Arabic. So first of all, the term itself, intransitive or looking at the word within it, which is transfer, transitive. It shows that something transfers from one thing to the next. Okay, it passes over. So when we say intransitive, in gives a negative type of meaning. So we say here an intransitive verb, a verb such that the action of the doer does not transfer or does not pass over directly to an object or a receiver. So it cannot pass over. So we'll say that verb is an intransitive verb. Example, the verb he slept. You can say Zaid slept on the bed. Zaid slept on the bed. The verb fell. Fatima fell from the chair. You see, the action of sleeping remains only with the subject. Who did the action here? Zaid slept. Yeah? Zaid slept. So therefore, Zaid is the subject of the verb. 
Did we have a direct object? No, we did not. The action remained with the subject and did not transfer over, did not pass over directly. And I want to emphasize this word here, directly. Now, yes, we can say, well, there's a bed, there's another word. But what did we use from a sentence structure-wise in order for bed to be used? We had to use a preposition on. Likewise, with the, with the word fell, Fatima fell from the bed, from the chair. In order for the action of Fatima to be connected to the chair, you had to use a preposition from. It cannot, we cannot say Fatima fell the chair. We would not say Zaid slept the bed. Okay, we must use a preposition for it to make complete sense. So let's read the definition again. Transit an intransitive verb, a verb such that the action of the doer does not transfer directly to an object or a receiver. Okay, it doesn't transfer directly. Um, have you all, I know it's, you all were not hearing from the very beginning or is it, or is it that um, you all now not hearing me? It's just for about two minutes. Can someone just confirm? Okay, so from where yes, did you all not hear? No, from this page. Yeah. All right. Jazak Mulakhair. So I was just saying in this last year, drawing the reference of the example. Sorry about that, my mistake. Um, the control on the actual headset itself was pressed. Okay, so uh, I do apologize for that. Let's continue here. So I was saying the example here, Zaid slept on the bed. There is no direct object. We need a preposition. Likewise, Fatima fell from the chair. We need a preposition from for it to make sense. Okay, so moving on. Then we have here the technical term. So you can say after me, al fa'lu lazimu. Say, al fa'lu lazimu. So this is that the technical Arabic term for an intransitive verb. Al fa'lu lazimu. What is the law of verbs that we identify as being? Fairlulazim or intransitive. What is the law that is applied for it? We say an intransitive verb only needs a subject to have complete sense. There is no need for an object. So again, we only need a subject that works with the verb in order that we can have complete sense. There is no need for an object. Let's look at these examples here. We have, for, for instance, the first example. Zahaba Zaidun. Zahaba Zaidun. What does this mean? Zaid went. That is complete sense. Okay? If we want to continue the sentence, then we can continue with a preposition and we can say Zahaba Zaidun Ilal Masjidi Ila. It will then be used. Okay? However, all we need for, 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 for complete sense here is the subject working along with the verb. So the verb zahaba is an intransitive verb. It does not take a direct object. Continuing, we have here Jalasat Zainabu Al Al Ardi. The word Jalasa. Jalasat is the feminine form. So Jala sat Zainabu, Zainab sat al al ardi on the ground or on the earth. Who sat Zainab? So Zainab is the subject. 
Now, did we take a direct object? No, we did not. So therefore, we say that this verb is an intransitive verb. It will not take a direct object. You know, yes, we may speak in um, a, a colloquial language and say, um, like for instance, Zaid went masjid. Zaid went masjid. We say like that, but really, you are in a preposition. It really supposed to be Zaid went to the mosque. You understand? He went to the school. Zainab sat on the floor. We don't say Zainab sat the floor. Okay? So therefore, we need only a verb with the subject for it to make complete sense. Continuing, we have here, the elephant appeared from the vegetation. This word, Nabat, you all may not know this, but that, you know, just use us here as an example. So we have, So we have Zohar al-Filu, the elephant appeared, Minan Nabati, from the, the vegetation, from the shrubs, right? So the word that we are looking at here is the word Zohara, Zohara. Zohara means he appeared. What appeared? The elephant. Can we say the, ele the elephant appeared, the vegetation? The, the elephant appeared, the shrubs, no, or the bushes appeared from. Know that if we want to continue the sentence, what do we need? A preposition. So this is what intransitive verbs, this is how it works. Okay, All you need is really a subject with it for it to make complete sense. For extension of the sentence, we will use like prepositions and other, and other parts of speech. Continuing. So now we get into transitive verb. And with transitive verb, as the name suggests again, something transfers. What is that transfers here? So we have a transitive verb. A transitive verb is a verb that allows the action of who? The subject to be transferred or pass over directly to an object and say without any preposition. English example we have, for instance, Zaid hit the man. What's the verb? Hit. Who hit? Zaid. Who did he hit? The man. So we realize that it takes an, an object, in this case, the man. So with transitive verb, there will be direct objects. Look at the next, look at the next example. Fatima helped the girl. So what is the verb? Helped. Who helped? Fatima. And who did Fatima help? The girl. There is an, a direct transfer of the action of helping to the girl. And we don't need any preposition. So a transitive verb allows the transferring or the passing over of the action from the subject directly to the object without the need of any preposition. So that is transitive and intransitive. What is, the, what is the Arabic technical term? We say that the transitive verb is called, and you can say after me. And let me ask you, how did we, or what did we say for the technical term of an intransitive verb? Al-fi'lul-lazim. And here, a, a transitive verb is called al fi muta adi So what's the, the law for the transitive verb? The transitive verb will take both so when am I gone? subject, which is called the dua, which is called the file, and an object or receiver, which is called the maf'ul. So note, an intransitive verb, which is a fellow lazim, only needs 
a subject. But a transitive verb need both a subject to do of the action and an object to receive of an action in order for it to make complete sense. Let's look at some examples of the application here. You have, for instance, Zaraba Zaidun Bakran. Zaid did Bakr. This verb is what type of verb? A transitive verb because we can't take a direct object, Bakran. Who hit? Zaid hit. Who did Zaid hit? Bakr. So therefore, Bakr is the direct object. It makes, therefore, the verb being a transitive verb. Al-fi'lul muta'addi. Look at the second example. Zainab helped a girl. Nasarat Zainabu bentan. We have Nasarat being the verb. Feminine, of course, because Zainab is the subject. Who helped? Zainab. Who did Zainab help? A girl. Bintan being the object. So with this verb, Nasarat, the action of Zainab, which is helping, can be transferred directly onto an object. And, you know, this is where we're going to have word which I'm a fool. It takes, um, it takes the case of Nasb with Fatha. Notice, Bakran, Fatha. Nasb usually takes Fatha. Let's look at the third example here. We have the verb sami'a. Sami'a, which means he heard. So we have sami'a rajulu, the man heard. What did the man hear? Al adhana, man heard the adhan. So sami'a, verb, a rajul, the subject of the verb, the file. It takes a kiss of Rafa by Dhamma. And this action of hearing can be transferred to an object. In this case, it will be the mafuldi, which is al adhana in the case of Nas by Fatha. Okay? So we have Sami ar rajulul adhana. The man heard the adhan. So what we can say about the trees of these three verbs? Zaraba, Nasarat, Sami'a. They are all transitive verbs. Now, this here on top here, oh, it, it really is supposed to be transitive, right? Not intransitive. So, these are all examples of transitive verb. Transitive verb. You have Zaraba, you have Nasarat, and you have Sami'a. They are all transitive verbs. All right, let's move on again. So I hope everyone followed that. If you have any questions concerning this, you can put it in the, in the chat or you can ask, you know, our brothers and so on. So let's review some of the verbs that we did so far. A few verbs only. We did the verb fataha. Fataha means he opened. He opened. How did you place this verb into its feminine form? It said fatahat. Fatahat. She opened. Okay. Fatahat. She opened. Then we had the verb zahaba. Zahaba. Zahaba becomes zahabat. She went. Zaba, he went. Zahabat, she went. What did we add? We add the ta. With the sakin, it's a long ta. Not the ta marabuta, the wrong ta. Not that ta, but the long ta. Then we have jalasa, he sat. Jalasat, with the ta again added on, we get she sat. Then we have nasara. He helped. We add a data and it becomes now Nasarat, she helped. Nasarat, she helped. Varaba, he hit. We add a data, it becomes Zarabat, 
she heard. Sami ah, he heard. The added it becomes Samiat, she heard. Then we have Nazara, he looked. We have Nazarat, she looked. So these are some verbs that, you know, we should make um, um, some effort to learn, inshallah. Practice writing them as well. And um, as we go along, there will be more verbs being added on and more vocabulary being added on. Remember, you are learning a language. And you really cannot learn a language without learning the vocabulary. Okay? So let's move on. All right, so let's look at these sentences here. The first one. Fataha Zaidun Baban. The verb that is being used is what type of verb? Immediately we can see that it takes an object and Baban. This is in the case of Nasb. It takes Tanwin. And as such, it makes the verb a fi'lul muta'addi or a, a transitive verb. Fataha Zaidun. Zaid opened, baban, a door. So verbal sentence. Zaid opened the door. Then we have a next sentence here. Sami'a Zaidun Rajulan. Again, what have you observed? We have observed that we have a subject and we have an object. What does it tell us? The verb is transitive again. A transitive verb allows for an object. So Zaid is the subject, the fa'il. It exists in the case of Rafa. Sami Zaidun. Who did Zaid here? Rajulan. Rajulan, Iman. And here the object exists in the case of Nasb with Fatha. Okay. So you have Zaid heard Iman. The next sentence, Jalasa Rajulun. Iman sat. Jalasa sat. Rajulun Iman. Iman sat. Is this verb a transitive or an intransitive verb? Well, we cannot apply direct object to it. We can say, Iman sat the chair. He can sat. On the chair, at the side of the chair, in the, at the front of the chair, at the back of the chair, we, you know, but he don't sack the chair. So it tells us that this verb is a, is an intransitive verb, and it becomes complete only with a subject, rojulun. So you have jalasa, rojulun, a mansat. Next example, samia bakrun, zaidan, bakar heard, zaid, again, Transitive verb, it takes an object, Zaid in the case of Nasb. And the last sentence here, Nasara Bakrun Tajiran. Bakar helped a merchant. Bakar helped a merchant. Transitive verb. Fairal Muta'addi. Bakar is the subject or the fa'il of the verbal sentence. Exists in the case of Rafa, by Dhamma. And the word Tajiran is the object or the maf'ulun bihi of the verbal sentence, and it exists in the case called nasb by fatha. So it is mansub, or well, it exists in the case of nasb by fatha, and the meaning of this is bakar helped a merchant. So this is the, um, what we would do with respect to verbs for the while. Yes, verbs, they are much more said, but this would, this would actually guide us in constructing many different types of sentences because whatever is there, it's an extension of the basic structure. We have the, the verb, there might be different types of verb, the present future tense verb, but it comes in the same position. We have the subject, we can have different extension of the subject. We might have a tall merchant, we might have the son of Zaid, different structures open. So therefore you're going to have extensions of this. We can have extensions of the, of the object as well. So once we understand the position of each, then when the extension comes, we treat each part on its own merit. Okay? So we'll continue there. So we'll stop there with verbs for a while. And we're going to different 
other structures as well. So the second thing that we wanted to get involved in is that of prepositions, prepositional phrase. So we're going to identify prepositions and how do we use it now, inshallah. Okay. So preposition, prepositional phrase, and we call that majrur, majrur. Majrur really referring to the noun that is used after the, the preposition. Okay, majrur, this phrase that is used here, this word that is used, it is really the noun that comes after the preposition. The prepositional phrase really is the usage of the preposition along with a noun. What are prepositions? First thing. So we say that a preposition, it refers to a word that is placed before a noun or pronoun to show a relation between it and some other word in the sentence. These really are these simple little words like in, on, by, with, from, to, until. Okay, so these are called preposition. Let's look at the example. We have here the word, nam the sentence. The boy is in the house. The boy is in the house. What is the preposition? The word in. In is the preposition. And we say that it shows the relationship between the boy, which is the subject, and another word in the sentence, which is the house. What is the relation between the boy and the house? Is in. We have an next sentence here. He went to the masjid. He went to the masjid. In this sentence, the preposition is to. It shows the relationship between the subject, which is he, and some other word in the sentence, which is the masjid. So we ask the question, where? Where did he go? And the answer will be to, which is showing the relation to the noun, the masjid. Okay? So simple, it shows the relation between it and some other word in the sentence. And you have like these prepositions here, in, on, by, from, to, and there, there's a host of other prepositions that are used, right? So these are some that we have there. So preposition in Arabic is called what? Har full jarri. Say that everyone. Har full jarri. Now again, we are studying Arabic. And these are the terms of, that are used in the language. So yes, you would have to make an effort in learning them. So a preposition in Arabic is called harful jarri. Literally, it means the particle of the genitive. A genitive jar, the declension of the word. So it is the particle of the genitive or harful jar. It's easier, you know, just learn the Arabic. The proposition is called harfajar. Now, a proposition will not be used in front of a verb. I'm saying it again. The proposition will not be used in front of a verb. It will be used in front of nouns. It can be used in front of pronouns. Okay. And those are the main usages of it. Now, when it is used in front of a noun, the noun that comes after it is called majrur, majrur. So say these two terms to me, harful jarri, preposition, majrur, the noun after the preposition. Majrur, the noun, after the preposition. So when we speak about a prepositional phrase, we are actually combining between harfajar and majrur. And we'll have something like this, right? Ala kitabin. Ala kitab. You sequence now. 
how uh, how do we use them in, in Arabic? And this here tells us that the sequence of the preposition and noun is the same as in English. Preposition first followed by noun. So if you say own a book, what would we say? The word for own is Allah. So you have own sequences first, followed by the word book, which comes after. Allah, kitab. Allah, kitab. We'll get into the voweling of it now. All right, so we have Allah, kitab. So sequence wise, preposition first, followed by noun. What is preposition again? Harful jar. What is the noun or how is the noun called after the preposition? We say majrur. All right. The preposition harful jar is a constant. So there are several things that we did so far. A constant, we mentioned that the past tense verb is a constant. We mentioned that pronouns are constants. And here we are saying now that prepositions are also constants and they will not have any case, okay? The noun after the preposition much roar will exist in the genitive case called jar. So how do we call this case? The case called jar. Example here, we have ala kita bin. Jar will usually take the vowel kasra. So what vowel will jar take? Remember, jar is really like a function. The word is not, sorry, uh, it's a case that tells us how do we recognize this function of the word. So if the word comes after a preposition, it is fulfilling a function. We apply a case to it, which is jar. And as such, we recognize it by applying kasra. Okay, so we have here ala kitabin, ala kitabin on a book. So ala is the preposition, or what we we'll call the harful jar. Harful jar. It's constant. And the word kitabin, it has now changed. We will learn the word kitabun. All the time we say kalamun, we say rajulun. But if a preposition comes in front of it, it would have an effect on the word and it causes it to be in the case called jar. And jar will take kasra. So, so far, we have met with the case of rafa. What is rafa? Rafa is the case that is applicable for the mubtara. What is the mubtara again, everyone? the subject of the nominal sentence. Rafa is applicable to the khabar. What is the khabar? The predicate of the nominal sentence. Rafa is applicable as well to the fa'il, the subject of the verbal sentence. So there are three structures that we did so far in which we'll use the case Rafa. And Rafa usually takes what vowel? It usually takes the vowel dhamma. Then we went on and identifying the verbal sentence. And in the verbal sentence, we mentioned that if the verb is a transitive verb, it would also take an object, the maf'ulun bihi. That maf'ulun bihi, how do we identify it? We apply the case of nasb. Nasb will be by fatha. So that's the second case that we learned, the case of Nasb. Rafa, now Nasb. And here we are learning the third case. There are three cases on nouns. Rafa, Nasb, and Jar. Jar now, we said that it will take a Kasra. So this is our new, uh, in, um, new point of learning for this week as well. The application of preposition. So let's look at some other proposition that we often encounter. We have here the preposition fi. Say after me, fi. What does fi mean? In. So let me ask you: If we wanted to say in a house, how would we say that? First of all, what is the word for house? 
Baiton. Baiton a house. If you want to say in a house, we'll therefore say fee by ten. And we apply kasra. Fee is a preposition or the halfajar. The noun that follows it is called majarur. And the case that it applies upon it is jar. What does jar take? Kasra. So you'll say fee by ten. All right. We have ala. Ala means own. Say after me, ala. This really supposed to be like a standing, you know, the small standing fat on top. Right? That's supposed to be on top there. I have to check and see how to get that on your Arabic keyboard. Right? Ala. Ala means own. It's really this here. Right? So I don't want you all to get confused. It's really that show. Um, ala means on. So you have ala on. If you want to say on a donkey, on a donkey. What is the word for donkey? Himarun. We learn that word with domain. So if you're applying ala with the word himar, because ala is a preposition, it is going to cause a case of jar for the word himar. And it will become ala himarin. Himarin. Majrur exists in the case of jar by kasra. B. What do we say? Belahi and kasra. B comes before the word Allah. It becomes belahi. Um, the bismi, bismillah. B ismillah. It causes kasra. B ismi, bismi. Allah. Bismillah. Right? So it causes kasra that follows on the word. The case of jar. If, for instance, you say, with a pen. The word for pen is kalamun. So therefore, you will say, bi kalamin. Bi kalamin. Ila is harful jar. It's a preposition. Ila mean two. If you want to say, to a mosque, what would you say? Ila masjidin. We say from a teacher. What is the word for teacher again? Mudarrisun. So therefore, we will say men. Mudarrisun. From a teacher. You want to say for a boy. What did you say? Li waladin. Li waladin. So note that the harful jar, the hurful jar, right? They will take a it will cause the noun that follows to be in the case of jar. And how do we call that word? Majroor. So majroor exists in the case of jar by kasra. And as we said, we say usually by. Because different nouns as we go along in our studies, there may be a little difference. Okay, When those words pop up, I will identify for you all, inshallah. So let's continue here. So how do we say only house? We say ala baitin. In an oven, so the word for oven is furnun, fur, furnun. So in an oven will be fi furnin. Now you don't know this word, right? For those who are based, those who are um, doing this for the first time. So the word for oven is furnun. So how do you say in an oven? Fi furnin. Then we have the word child is teflon. You want to say to a child, what would we say? Ila tiflin. Ila tiflin. Moving on. Using prepositions in sentences now. Let's look at some of these sentences. Zaid is a student in a school. First of all, you all work with me on this. What type of sentence would this be? Would it be a verbal or a nominal? You look for a verb. Zaid is a student in a school. No verb. Is it's a copula? So therefore, it tells us that it is a nominal sentence. Okay. What came before the is is the subject of the muktada. 
of Kibafta, which is a student, it is the Khabar, the predicate. And then we have in, which is Harfujar, the preposition, followed by a school, the noun after the preposition, which is called Majrur. Let's look at it further. Therefore, we'll say Zaidun is the subject of Mubtada, case of Rafa, usually taken dumb. So Zaidun. It's the subject or even Mubtada, case of Rafa, that usually takes dumb. Tolibun. Tolibun. Zaid is a student. What is he understood is a warm that coming right at this point. Good. So Tolibun is the predicate of the cover. Case of Rafa usually takes Dhamma. Remember we said the Mubtada and the Khabar, both of them exist in case of Rafa. And what does Rafa usually take? Dhamma, okay? Then we have the word fee. Fee is a preposition. It is called harful jar. It is a constant word. Therefore, there will be no case attached to it. Now, all of these we are case of Rafa, case of Rafa and so on. And it tells us what vowel will be for the case. When there's a constant, there would not be any case, okay? Then we have the word that comes after the preposition. How do we call this? Majrur, majrur, exists in the case of jar, usually takes what vowel? Kasra. So the sentence will be Zaidun, Tolibun, Fi Madarasatin. Zaidun, Tolibun, Fi Madarasatin. Zaid is a student in a school. Let's look at another sentence. We have Zaid went to a mosque. So first of all, let's scan the sentence. Let's identify whether it is a nominal or verbal. We need to do this before we even start to think structures. So we go to Zaid went to a mosque. So what we find? We find went. Went is a verb, right? So because there is a verb in it, we say that it is a verbal sentence. So minds are the thing, verbal sentence. You have fail, file, maf'ul, okay? Whether it is transitive or intransitive, fail or mutaaddi, fail or lazim, we said to think along those type of laws. So we have here, Zaid went to a mosque. What is the word? What is, what is um, the verb? Zahaba. Who is the subject? Zaid, so we need to identify the, the word who is the subject first. Who went? Zaid. So Zaid is the subject, case of Rafa, and the file, which is the subject of a verb, usually takes Dhamma. Okay, Rafa by Dhamma. Now we need to identify the subject in order to apply the verb accurately. This is masculine, therefore we'll use a masculine form of the verb. And the verb, of course, is a constant. There is no case attached to it. Ila is a preposition. Ila means to. And it is called harfajar, constant. There is no case as well. And the word that comes after a preposition is called majrur. How is it called? Majrur. It exists in the case of jar. And jar usually takes what vowel? Kasra. So we have here. Zahaba Zaidun Ila Masjidin Zaid went to a mosque. Zaid went to a mosque. Let's look at one more sentence. We have the sentence here Zaid hit a boy with a pen. Now, in the last sentence, we have Zaid went. Went is what type of verb? Intransitive. Here we have the verb hit. So we scan again. Zaid hit a boy with a pen. Is there a verb? Yes. The verb is hit. So therefore we, we think along the line of jumla fe'lia. Verbal sentences. And we start with the verb. Dharaba. Who hit? Zaid. So it's a masculine verb. Who did he hit? A boy. Because dharaba is what type of verb? Transitive or intransitive? It can't take a direct object, so therefore it is transitive. What's the Arabic term again for that? Al-fa'ilul muta'addi. Transitive verb. The action can be transferred. And with a pen, it will be be, ola, 
column with, with the pen, right? With is the preposition, pen is the word after preposition. Let's identify, firstly, the verb, which is daraba, it's a constant word, no case attached to it. Zaid is the subject of the verb, which is the file, case of rafa, usually takes dhamma, okay? So the case of rafa by dhamma, as we say. Now, this sentence has an object. Who received the action? A boy, because the verb is transitive. So, object of the of the verb, which is called maf'ul bihi. Case of nasb, it takes the case of nasb. And nasb usually takes fatah. Remember I told you all that whenever we are using the tanween fatah, we apply an aleph with it. This is how it is used. Okay, This is the, the law that governs that. It is only for tanwin fata. Note, yes, a tanwin dhamma, but there is no aleph or no addition thing. So it usually is used with that for um, easy identification. Then we have B, the preposition. This is called harful jar. No, it is a constant word, no case to be applied for it. The noun that comes after the preposition is called majrur. It exists in the case of jar. Usually takes kasra. Okay. Now there's one thing I want to identify here for you all. And that is, you see, we have here between you have a space here between B and column. This is left intentionally like that. But when we have to write this, we will not actually be seeing a space. It will be, it will be written like this. You have B, color, men. Because as we said, whenever a word exists as a single letter, it is always connected and joined with the following word. So you'll find it that it will be resembling this here. B, color, men. I did this so that you can identify and separate between the preposition and the hurtful jar. Now, as I said, the third thing that we wanted to do is that of the definite article. I still want to do that. So um, I want you all to, to just follow a bit. So we take the five minutes that we normally give in the beginning before we start. <laughs> so we, um, now it's 7.27, so we have about seven minutes. Let's get into that. I want to introduce that to the inshallah. So we're talking about definite article now. What is the definite article? The definite article it is that article that gives a definite meaning. And that is the, the article, the. So we say a boy, but we say the boy. A conveys the meaning of indefinite meaning. The noun is general and can be applicable boy in, in English. It means any boy. But when we say the, which is definite now, conveys the meaning of the definite article meaning. The noun is specific and refers to a boy who has been referenced or mentioned previously. So when you say the, the man, it could be as regarding um, it could be as regarding someone who we have already spoken to. If we say a man, it means anybody. Okay. In Arabic, how do we express the definite article? We have a boy that is usually expressed by the word having the tenuin dhamma the ending. Right? So we have this is represented by the absence of the definite article and the presence of tenuin. So we'll say waladun a boy, any boy. The meaning of the, this is represented by using the definite article al. So we did this in the Professor Abdul Rahim book. Al waladu. Al waladu. The boy. Notice that when al comes, what happens to the tanwin? It goes away. So let's identify some of the laws that governs it. An indefinite noun is called nakiratun. Now, this is mentioned in the, the text as well. You can always reference this. In your, your text on page 21, you'll have these films coming, right? 
We have nakiratun. Nakira is the indefinite noun. And the noun that has al is known as ma'rifa. Ma'rifa. Nakira. Nakiratun. Ma'rifa. Ma'rifatun. Is the definite noun. So your waladun is nakira. But we will say al waladu is ma'rifa. Let's look and see how or what happens. When we have a definite noun, the indefinite is expressed with its own mean being maintained. This gives the mean of A. What happens when we apply al? The al is used at the beginning of the word. For the definite article, the, the ten mean is removed. There is a single vowel used. So these, you will never have al and ten mean coexisting in the same word, as I told you all. Then we have, well, as I told you on page 21, 22, in your text, that is basic Arabic grammar. Now, if you don't have it, there is no problem because whatever we are covering here, it is really covering the entire topic in itself, okay? And extra as well. So we have application of it now. We have waladun. In the case of nasp, that is like when it is imafulun bihi, it will be waladan. And the same word, if it now functions after a preposition, it will be waladin. If this word now becomes ma'rifa with the al, it becomes al waladu. Same, that ten mean, but now we have a single al waladu. In the case of nas, we become al walada. In the case of jar, al waladi. So what did we do? We add the al, we take over ten mean. That's all. Then we have a girl is benton. In the case of nasp, being indefinite will be bentan. Bentan mean, note the aleph that comes after it in writing. And then you have bentin in the case of jar, like if it follows the preposition. Yeah, then we have the girl, al bentu. We add al, we take off the tan mean, al bentu. Then in the case of nasp, it becomes al benta. Take off the ten min, add al. And in the case of jar, al bin teeth. Not so that is, those are straightforward, simple there. When you speak about the definite article, we need to consider the different letters that are joined or what the word itself begins with. What the word itself begins with. And when we are doing that, we make a clear distinction of letters which we consider to be sun letters and moon letters. I want you all to look here and observe and tell me what are you all seeing. The word in Arabic for sun is shamsun. Sheen means seen. Shamsun. The word for moon in Arabic is kamarun. Kamarun, a moon. How do we say the sun, making it definite. What have you observed? You have the Aleph, the Lamb, the Sheen. Of course, the first observation is that no Tanwin, and either of them. In the word Kamar, we have Al Kamaru. In the word the sun, it will be Ashamsu. So, what's your observation? It should look like this. You, your observation should be that in, in moon letters, the letter lam takes a sukun. So you have al kamaru. The letter lam takes a sukun. Al kamaru. And here we are seeing in sun letters, the letter sheen takes a shadda. The lam does not take any sukun. Are you all following that? Are you all seeing that? So in the sun letters, the letter sheen, which is the first letter of the word, it takes a shadda instead, and there is no sukun on the lamb. Now, how are these referred to in Arabic? The sun letters are known as al huruf shamsiyatu. Say that, everyone. al huruf shamsiyatu. Sun letters. It comes from the, words, the same word shams. The moon letters are known as 
Al-huruful qamariyatu. Al-huruful qamariyatu. The moon letters. Now, it is not necessary that you learn, I mean, it's a, these technical terms immediately. It's not that essential, but you need to understand them. Yes, you should learn it, but it's not essential that you need to, to, to know this like as, as urgency and sacrifice other things. You need to know if you want to put that effort, put the effort to actually learning the letters that are moon and the letters which are the sun letters. Okay? So these letters that we are seeing here, Alif, Ba, Gain, Ha, Jim, Kaf, Wow, Khof, Ain, Kof, Ya, Mim, Ha. These are the moon letters. You might be wondering why is it that it mix up so? Now, normally, if we will learn this, and we will say it's a it's a sentence. Ibri, Hajjaka, wa Khof, Aqimahu. You need to turn your Hajj and fear its a depth of you know depth of it, the, the actions of it. Now, with respect to the sun letters. And moon letters, if you learn one, we don't need to learn the other set. We could you use the law of exemption then in our mind and apply it. And I want you all, I want to take you all to this page here and we'll stop at this point, right? Now, the, this is the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet. If you feel that you need to review your Arabic alphabet, fine, do so. The red represents our moon letters, Aleph Ba. The yellow represents the sun letters. It's shining bright, right? The sun letters. Now we can see certain clusters of sun and moon letters. And yes, the sun letters is easy to learn because of the cluster of it. You have ta and tha. And then you have dal, zal, ra, za, sin, sheen, sword, lord, ta, the. And then we have two at the end, which is Lam and Nun. These are your sun letters. You know, I often, I often make a small little inference of how to learn it quickly. It might sound a bit funny, but it is easy, right? You know, many weddings that people go to, they had the drums playing. How do you call that? Tassa, right? And when you finish your Tassa, what does it have? Now, I seem to go to weddings like that. Eh? I just show you now easy to remember. So you have tassa, and when afterwards you're gonna eat food, dal, you start with dal, and you continue straight until zohar, and then you lick up some lamb at noon. Right? Okay, so you have tassa, you go to dal, and it continues straight until zoh. And then after you have lamb. When are you taking when you're having a slam at noon? So think about, about that. And remember, all the other letters are really your, your moon letters, right? The sun letters are the one that you're going to apply your shadda to. Now, with this in mind, I want you to look at your Professor Abdurrahim's book, okay? And you'll see that this is what basically is being applied now. We reach at this point here, around page 23, moon and sun letters. So we can take it from this point. Al-Huruful Qamariyatu. Well, huruf shamsia, and you have the examples. And these are the examples. A al. How do you apply the ta? It takes a shutdown if you set there. Right? So you can, I want you all to review this now from page 23. You can start a little earlier because prior to this, you have some new words and so on. But really on page 23 is where the sun and moon letters come about. So next week, we're going to start with Professor Abdurrahim's book and just you know, we'll take the time and go through it and review that as well, and then move on, inshallah. So, you know, um, I take a two, three minutes extra from you all, but that's a complete what was the intention for today's class. Um, I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm and nafi, that is beneficial knowledge, and that he uses us as instruments for the propagation of his deen, and that he uses us, and whatever ilm that we acquire, that it becomes a means of for he die in this world, means of guidance for us in this world, and as a means of acquiring taqwa for that of the hereafter. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.